right, my, uh, my next guest has written more than 30 books. His latest, Ain't Nobody's Business, examines what he calls the absurdity of consensual crimes in a free society. Please welcome Peter McWilliams. <laughs> Now, great song. Great song. <laughs> one of my favorites. Now, Peter, if we're going to talk about consensual crime, I have to ask you, what is a consensual crime? <laughs> First question. Off First the bat. question. Gee, good, good interview. I'm style. doing well. This is Thank great you. Technique. This is great, and I like your hair. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, if I have uh, you on my side, I can't lose. <laughs> a consensual crime is anything they can put us in jail for that doesn't physically harm the person or property of another. And we're talking about things like uh, gambling, drug use. Um, homosexuality, prostitution, helmet laws, seatbelt laws, all of that. And people think, oh, these are kind of silly things, aren't they? It's not really that much of a problem. But in fact, there's, we spend $50 billion a year prosecuting these crimes. And because... Of ...of what most people pay in their personal income tax. Right now, there's 350,000 people in jail for consensual crimes. There's another million and a half on parole or probation, and more than four million people will be arrested this year for doing something that didn't physically harm the person or property of another. So now, in your book, what are you, what are you focusing on in your book primarily? I mean, what are the crimes, the consensual crimes? I mean, some of these things are just, uh, for example, drug abuse. Yes. You know, yes. Uh, you would have to say that, do you think that cocaine or the selling of cocaine is harmless? Well, it's, as adults, it's not harmless necessarily, but then if you look at the most harmful drug in the country, it's definitely cigarettes. Mm -hmm. 500,000 people a year die from cigarettes. Right. All the illegal drugs put together, it's less than 6,000 people a year. So in terms of actual harm, either we should be consistent. We should ban cigarettes, right. ban well, alcohol, it's, it's, ban it's, all the question is or in... we have to let adults make their own adult decisions. And I maintain that, that our, our little government here, this experiment called the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, puts the responsibility on us as individuals, as adults. Now, a lot of people, and I know you do this too, you, you go back to the Founding Fathers, you go back to the beginning and the Constitution, and you say it was simpler then. Look, at Jefferson didn't yes. mention anything about these things. So you think it, it, that's a little unfair, I mean, to go back? Those were just much simpler times. The country was much smaller, the problems were much less complex. Do you think mm -hmm. that it's fair to say, look, Jefferson, uh, you know, didn't... Well, say anything in the Constitution yeah. about, uh, you know, the selling of crack, so therefore, <laughs> you know what I mean? What? Well, actually, he did. Basically, the Constitution is a document that is very limited. It mm -hmm. says, other than these things, it's your right to do whatever you want, other than these very small things which you turn over to the government, and controlling personal morality was definitely not one of them. And uh, separation of church and state is there, and uh, all these things are there actually to protect us. We've never tried the Constitution. Uh, Chesterton once said that, uh, Christianity was not, um, did not, was not tried and failed. Mm -hmm. It was found difficult and never tried. And it's the same thing with the Constitution. No one has ever trusted us to be adults. No one's ever trusted us to run our own lives and, and that our own best interests are going to be not to do excesses of anything, whether it's drugs or television or, or whatever. So what is it you want? I mean, if you were in <laughs> complete control right now, what would you do? What do I want? <laughs> Um, You're in complete control. What would you uh, would you say that anything can be on TV? Would you get rid of the, uh, you know, would you say that that that, uh, that people can say whatever they want on television? Yeah, I think. Well, actually, in ain't nobody's business. If you do, I propose a box that would sort of allow people to set what comes into their homes. So some people really like violence, and some people want no violence, and and uh, some people like uh, different things and don't like other things. So I think technology is going to have to play a large role in this, actually. And, uh, did you notice my Beavis and Butthead thing? Oh, yeah. Now, are you a, you're a... Ah. This is Beavis here saying, hey, man, censorship sucks. <laughs> so I, I take it that you are a... I yeah, take it then I'm you're a, a fan of Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Butthead, yeah. And you think that, uh, you think that that's not... Now, recently, MTV got in trouble because they claim that... Uh, now, do you think that's just ridiculous? Do you think that, yeah, that you can't blame them at all for this kid setting a fire? These cartoon characters burned their house down. You know, it's like I grew up with the Three Stooges. Uh, can you imagine me doing all the Three Stooges stuff in my house? My, I, actually, I did it once. I saw a Walt <laughs> Disney cartoon, and one of the characters got a pin in the uh, rear portions there. And I went and did that to my father. I thought, boy, this is going to be great fun. Right. You know? <laughs> Mickey Mouse got a big laugh out of it. I will, too. 
Well, my father, in no uncertain terms, informed me that what goes on on television does not go on in the house. And uh, today would be called child abuse. And, and, my, and, and my father would sue Walt Disney right. for uh, damages and so right. forth. It's, when are people going to start teaching their children that everything that goes on on TV should not be repeated? This is called entertainment, folks. Don't do this on television. It's, you want to see how crazy it's gotten? This is, this is amazing. Shall I show you some pornography? Would you like, like to see some pornography? Yeah. That's all, yes. Let's see some pornography, yes. I'm proud to say that my book jacket has been deemed pornographic by several Christian bookstores and organizations. Can we get a, can we get a shot here of what's pornographic? Okay, here we go. Here's That's the disgusting. Now, <laughs> notice, notice the nude woman. You see? Pornographic. Yeah. Notice the frontal nudity in the children. Tisk, tisk, tisk. This is what those people think. By the way, this is a painting called the, the Toilette of Venus. It was painted in 1751. Mm -hmm. It hangs in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. This, people have literally deemed this pornographic and will not sell it in their stores because this is pornographic. Wow. Uh, do we want these people deciding what we are going to watch and not watch? I maintain that we can decide that just fine for ourselves. Well, it'd be nice if you were right. All right, we're going to go. Thank you very much. We'll be right back with Nappy Sweet. Okay, we are flush out of time, but I do want to thank my guest, Peter McWilliams. Thank you for being here. I want to thank Jane Pauling, who had to go. I want to thank Matthew Sweet for being here. I also want to thank Andy Richter, the Max Weinberg 7. Thank you very much for coming. We'll see you tomorrow night.